So in a previous episode, you guys seen Jeff Ray here doing an awesome TIG demonstration for us on some exhaust systems for Hefner Performance. Well, when Jeff left the facility, we sent him back with an Everlast Power TIG 200 DV. So the man cub and I got to talking, how cool would it be to build a cart for him, custom built weld.com weld cart. So we're gonna go ahead and poke around the storeroom, see what type of material we have laying around and uh, see what we can come up with. What do you say? Let's do it. So what do we got back here in man cub's cave? Uh, Jason, uh, I don't have a whole lot back here, but what I do got is a uh, four by eight sheet over there, uh, 836 carbon steel. What do you think? Yeah, I think we could, man. We could probably design something out to where we could just cut it out in one solid piece and I don't know, maybe fold it up, you know, right. like a like a paper bird or something like that. All right. Well, kind of neat. We can use some of the off cuts you have here, some of the odds and ends for like reinforcement on the inside, little catches and trays and stuff. What well, you want to do a design on the creaky table? We'll go ahead and sketch it out on our cardboard first. All right. And then we'll uh, kind of get the concept, and then we can go ahead and transfer it over to the uh, the creaky table. It's a good idea. I think because we're we're going to try to build as much of this out of a, a full sheet as we can, we can bend these bottom parts in to kind of meet in the middle. We're going to build it out of eighth inch. Eighth, yeah, four by eight sheet of eighth inch. We're right. trying to get everything out of one sheet of material, do all of our bends and stuff like that. So I think up front here, you know, we have our dualweld.com logo. Mm -hmm. In this area, we're going to have our uh, filler metal storage, you know, different rods. And we'll, we'll kind of lay that out once we get over there on the, uh, the machine. Gotcha. And then in this area, is, we're going to have that water cooler up top. You know, this is going to be the main Yeah, the water <laughs> cooler. welding machine. Gotcha. And the welding machine is going to sit up top right here. Right. All right. And then on the side, Oops. you know, we're going to go 24 inches. Same, same height obviously and then but you know we put the logo in there we can do that on on both but to, to lay the whole thing out so this is our full sheet yep so if we come in six and a quarter and put some relief cuts in here so that court that's originally a six and an eighth but you're adding your eighth uh, inch in for the you know it'll be a six and an eighth Right. for the material thickness. Yep. Gotcha. So we'll come in six and an eighth, and that'll that'll be the center where our bend's gonna go. Same thing on this side. Then, all right. And then just do some relief cuts in there. You know, just quarter yeah. inch wide holes, probably three inches long, radius on the ends, and that'll just take some of that metal away. So when we bend it, be easier it'll be a bend. nice smooth bend since yeah. we're, we're gonna do it all by hand. Yeah. I want to I want to take this. And, and see if we can get it all in, in one area and just do a bend right here. So that, I think we discussed that was about seven and a quarter inches. Mm -hmm. So from like here over, you know, that's gonna be 12 inches because that's gonna be the side of this. It's gonna be 12 inches wide. And then some relief cuts here, seven and a quarter. And then we have the, our 34 inch height we're gonna go in here 34 and an eighth again from the, the center of this bend line here to the center of All right. 12 inch area in here because that 12 inch area here is gonna be the front of our machine. We'll have another 34 and an eighth. And then our, our rod storage. So we'll delete this line. We're gonna make that. We're, we're gonna see what kind of material <clears throat> we have left because I. Um, I think you told me we have 14 and three quarter inches is what we need here for that water cooler. Yep, 14 and three quarters, yep. So once we get over to the plasma, uh, that's gonna give us you know, our exact dimensions. We can do our takeoff from there and get everything cut out. But well, we're gonna do our rod storage up in here. That's 12 inches tall though, right? And Yeah, it's good. well 12 inches. 12 inches wide, so that's this measurement inch, all right, across 12 here. inches wide. And then we'll figure out, once we get over there, we can take that 14 and three quarters, since that's our critical dimension. Uh, we'll take that from 34 and an eighth, and uh, we'll put that on the bottom. That way we have 14 and three quarters from here to here. here. Gotcha. And then what I'd like to do up here is have um, like a little visor, and we'll do some relief cuts here so it doesn't look like just an eighth inch edge here. Gotcha. And then when we bend that in and, and weld these corners, yeah. that's gonna give it a little bit of rigidity, you know, for that machine to set up on top. We can do the same thing in the back. Gotcha. So we've got our 34 plus our 12, that gives us 36. 
Uh, you make these two inches and then two inches, so we're up to 40. So yeah, I think that that's about it. And then we'll be able to take this down and, and use these uh, the tab and slot tables and just try to clamp this in place and just start bending and then kind of fold it up like an origami. All right. Do we need any uh, reinforcements in here or anything? Like angle you yeah, were talking think, about earlier? I think once we get done, we'll go ahead and we'll throw some this way. So they'll go across the back, kind of out of the way of the logo. And then we'll kind of that. figure out in the back here, we'll probably have to put an insert on the inside. That way, you know, so you have your... your uh, Oh, because you yeah, were talking yeah. about offsetting yeah, your you other holes. Yeah, you got your electrodes two coming back in here, you know. So you want a, a piece back here that's going to kind of receive those, so they're not just hanging in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, they'll be hanging from nice, the front, nice and presentable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All then, right. You know, it'll keep the sides clean. You know, we can put some uh, some hooks on here. I'd like to do something radiused, you know, so whenever they, they have uh, torch hoses and workpiece clamps and stuff, it's not hanging on like hard ninety degree edges kind of like a hose reel, just yeah. nice and smooth. We can figure out a way to, we can roll that around a piece of pipe and then cut out like an outline on the uh, the queaky. All right, yeah, sounds good. And uh, we're gonna just do a, what, a foot pedal? Yeah, Later on, we'll, hang we'll the foot pedal on? We'll put a, we'll build a little bracket for a foot pedal and then we also have to incorporate something for the bottle rack. But I'd like to, I want, I'd, I'd like to have like a ramp style, almost like a movable, so you can kind of step on the back part of that, that bottle cart and then roll the bottle and, and sit in place. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, that way you're not manhandling. Yeah, bear hugging it. Oh. Yeah. I think that's it, man. Let's take this over there and we'll uh, we'll start doing it on the real CAD system instead of this computer or cardboard aided drying. <laughs> All right, man, Cub. So we've taken everything from our cardboard aided design and transferred it over to the computer aided design. We have uh, Hefner's logo on here on both sides, kind of embossed there, and then we have the Weld.com logo down here on the bottom, as well as the rod holders. So we'll go ahead and send this over to the cam. Uh, Man Cub went ahead and, and put in all of our lead in and lead outs uh, so we have uh, least amount of pierce marks as possible. We'll go ahead and send this over to the CNC program and we're ready to cut. Alright guys, while that piece is cutting out, we're going to go ahead and take a moment to give you guys a special announcement. So what we're going to start doing is engaging with our community on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. So we're going to provide constructive criticism, advice, and feedback for you on your welds. So if you guys have any questions about the welding process or procedure that you have going on in school or at work or a different position, go ahead and send us a picture, give us the parameters and settings, and we're going to provide you some feedback. Uh, hopefully we can correct some of the mistakes you're making or help you along your journey in whichever way we can. So if you have a picture, go ahead and drop it in the Facebook account at weld.com on our page, or go ahead and post it on Instagram and use hashtag weld.com. Stay tuned after this video for the first segment. All right, so we just got the piece all cut out. We're going to go ahead, take it off the table, get it cleaned up, take it over to the tab and slot, and show you guys how to bend it. All right, so we got the material back over here on the table. We're going to go ahead and clean it up. As with any uh, thermal cutting process, there's a little bit of dross left over. So Man Cub and I are going to go ahead and hit it with some of the uh, wire, wire wheels. Uh, here we go. All right, so we just flipped it because the areas that we have to do our bends, the ways that we want those to go so that our lettering and everything still stays left to right and in order. So I went ahead and marked out center of all these relief holes and we're gonna have Man Cub here is gonna go ahead and score that. Just basically making a shallow cut in here with the, with the cutoff wheel. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to bend. So this is eighth inch material. We don't have access to a bender. Um, like most people at home, you know, I'm, I'm not somebody that has a, a, bre a pest, press break in my uh, my garage there. I don't, man, have you got one? No way. That's the cameraman. The camera, the I don't way. think the cameraman's got one either. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and make a couple of relief cuts and show you guys how you can, you know, kind of successfully bend some of this stuff at home in the garage. All right, so the Cubs got uh, some relief cuts in here. We're gonna go ahead, bend these small tabs here, and then we're gonna get the 
Other piece there that's gonna be the electrode holder, a rod holder with the weld.com logo. Get the tails in and then fold the center in together and put a couple spot tacks in here and there as we're going, just to kind of keep everything held together. So we got everything bent, put where we want it. Uh, we're gonna, it worked out pretty decent with the relief cuts and everything. Mancub did a great job on that. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go ahead now and get everything tacked up, squared, and kind of you know hit some of the welds up, and then get those cleaned up, ready for paint. All right, guys, I'm running at 18.5 volts, 90 amps. Um, I got 030 set here, and I'm on synergic mode. I got the wire type set to steel. I'm just gonna go ahead and run through these uh, tacks and everything, and then I'm gonna load her out. All right, guys, so we got everything tacked up and squared the way we want it. Um, everything's looking good so far. Uh, not bad for, you know, breaking this thing over a, a work table. So we're going to go ahead and conclude part one right now. In the meantime, we're going to put a couple welds on here. We're going to do a little blend grinding, get it prepped for paint. In episode two, make sure you guys come back for that. We're actually going to finish off this thing. We're going to put a filler metal holder on here as well as a place for a foot pedal to mount when we're not using it, torch holder, and the um, workpiece clamp holder as well as the bottle rack that's gonna go in the back. So make sure you guys tune in for the next time. And we're also gonna be delivering it to Hefner Performance down in Sarasota. So we wanna thank you guys for liking and subscribing our videos. Make sure you do the same with this one. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, make every well better than your last. Mike had like a serial Delayed. killer stare into the camera. <laughs> I can feel that look on me when he's probably do that, huh? Were you staring at me the whole time for like the first 45 seconds? I felt I like there was you. a heater on me, man. He's like, <laughs> and a workpiece clamp holder. <laughs> staring at me like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just got the piece. <laughs> this? I'm nice. sorry, dude. All right, all right, no more. Ready? All right, so we just got the piece done. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think you were going that fast. I was fast. trying to play through it. No, no, no! <laughs> Cut! Cut! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you laughing about? <laughs> You're like, hey guys! <laughs> Heck no! Still rolling. Wait, no. Because you'll have me do it, and wait, you guys will sit and watch. Still waiting on the camera guy or camera, what? I was just going to say, cameraman, you ready to do this or what? Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to our first segment of Help My Well. Today's uh, user submitted inquiry is from Josh Kutcher and he used the Facebook page under weld.com to submit his inquiry. So it says, hi all, I've been messing around with my welder for about a week now and I was curious what you see that I need to improve on. The welder is a Lincoln Tombstone ACDC, process is SMAW, he's using 3 8 thick steel, the electrode is an E6011 and he's running at 90 amps AC. Thanks for the critique. 
Well, Josh, the first thing I noticed is you have a little bit of lack of fusion on the toe of your weld here. And you have some slag in there, which tells me you probably have some undercut in some additional areas. So first off, what I would tell you is you need to maintain a much tighter arc gap. Looks like your arc length might be a little too long. In addition, work on your technique a little bit as far as consistency. Try to make those, those the whip and paws a little bit tighter in there. Uh, as far as the electro that you're using, 6011 is a good rod to start with. Uh, it's an F3 classification, so it's good for dirty material, galvanized, anything like that. But you're running 90 amps on AC. So the first thing I would do is, since you have the option, go ahead and run the rod on DC positive. It's going to run better there. You're going to get much better penetration. And you're going to be able to run around that 90 to 95 amp area. Uh, if you're dead set on running AC, I would go ahead and probably increase 10 to 15 amps. So run around 100 to 105 amps uh, right up in that area. And that should give you a little better penetration, uh, flatter weld, smoother bead appearance. And that should take care of you. All right, guys, so thanks for tuning in to our first episode. If you guys have something you want us to check out, give you some uh, feedback, you know, professional uh, criticism, go ahead and submit your, your photos as well as all the parameters that you're using, whether it's, uh, you know, steel, aluminum, stainless, whatever uh, material you're working on, as far as the, uh, the process you're going to use, dick mig tig, you know, whatever, whatever process, and then give us as much information as you can on the parameters, uh, travel speed, amps, volts, wire feed speed, anything that applies, the position, type of electrode that you're using, uh, polarity, all that stuff. So thanks for checking us out.